We interrupt this regularly scheduled program to let you know Frugally Delicious is not cooking this week. <gasps> well, she won't be using the oven or the stove. These are the items that I purchased for this no cook 24 meals. So that's a week in one day. I have lots of fresh ingredients here that I am super excited to use. And I am so excited to not have to cook. Oh, you have no idea. I love cooking for y'all, but you know, it's getting hot out and it really is nice to not have to kind of slave over the stove a little bit. I do keep my house hotter in the summer because, well, that AC is expensive. So these are the items that I'm going to be using and let's get into the very first meal. Before starting this first meal, I'm just going to let you know that I will be using spices, lots of different spices and condiments from the fridge, mustard, mayo, ketchup, and things like vinegars and maybe lemon juice, lime juice, sugar, basic pantry staples to make these no cook meals. So just being upfront and honest with you, you're gonna need a lot of basic pantry and fridge staples. I'm gonna be eating three times this week overnight oats. I'm gonna be using one and a half apples and I will save the other half of this apple for another meal. All right, got my three jars, got my apples chopped, got all my stuffs together. Just getting these pre-made so they're all nice and tasty and ready for me to eat them. Got my half gallon of milk. I'm gonna open that bad boy up. Boom. For each of your glasses of overnight oats, you'll need two thirds cup milk for each of them. That's a one. That's a two. That's a three. If you do not have milk, don't wanna use milk, can't use milk, it's too expensive, you ain't got it. You can't go to the store, it went bad, whatever. You can use water. <laughs> to each of these beautiful glasses of milk, I'm gonna add in 1 fourth cup oats. You can use quick oats or old fashioned oats, whatever you wanna use. All right, look at this, already easy peasy, I'm loving it. <laughs> I just love it. I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon to mine. If you don't have cinnamon, you can use nutmeg, you can use cloves, you can use allspice. You can use pumpkin pie spice. I'll put a little bit of cinnamon in there. I love cinnamon. And by the way, this is a nice little quick tip. I don't know if I've ever shared this on the channel, but if you want coffee and you don't wanna buy flavored coffee because you don't like the way it tastes or it's more expensive than the plain brand, you can use cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice Sprinkle it on top of the coffee grounds and then let it brew. It is so good. It gives it this nice little nutty flavor. I am gonna put about a teaspoon or so of sugar. You can use brown sugar, regular sugar. I'm gonna add that to each of these. You don't have to use sugar. You can use replacement sugar or no sugar at all. I'm gonna give that a stir -oni. You could also give it a shake a by putting the lid on. Everybody likes a little shake around me, right? This is a half of an apple on each of these piles. So I'm just gonna add that into my quick oats. That is it. I'm gonna give that a little stir, just get the apples dunked down in there. And then put these bad boys in the refrigerator, let them set overnight. All right, to jumpstart off this 24 meals, that's eight days, I'm gonna be making granola banana cereal. And I did have this on hand already, so I didn't go out and buy a new box. It would be kind of silly to do that if I already had it at home. But um, I compared these to the ones that you can buy at the Dollar Tree. And at the Dollar Tree, it only comes with three, two bars in each pack. So I am going to just not use these other three packs. I'm only gonna be using these three packs in this video. And I'll probably only use half of this pack. I'll just dump that in your bowl. And then I have one banana. I am just going to slice it very professionally with a spoon. <laughs> and I want to dump that in the bowl too. 
And I don't like a lot of milk in mine, so I'm gonna probably use about two thirds cup. And that is it right there. Just give her a nice mix. And if you want to, you could leave this sit here for a few minutes, put it in the fridge for like 30 minutes and it will soften up the granola bar just a little bit and it makes them like chewy, chewy crunchy. It's so good. It's just so fresh tasting. And what I like about this too is this is great for taking to my lunches. You just put the milk and the bananas in a bowl leave out the granola bar, and then just add it all together when you get to work. All right, lunch for day one is going to be a mayo and tomato sandwich. I'll be using half of a tomato. I'm gonna slice these into thin slices. And of course, I'll be using French bread. I don't think I'm gonna be using this, um, all of this anyway for this video, but we'll see what I can hammer away at. I'm gonna make two little sandwiches. All right, and a little bit of mayo. This would be really good if you toasted the bread. So if you have a toaster, that would be really, really good. I like a nice crunchy bread, but I'm not going to be doing that with these. I'm just gonna eat them just like this. And of course, what is a tomato sandwich without a little bit of pepper on there? And then just stack the old tomatoes on that sandwich. I like to top mine with just a little bit of salties on there. All right, and that'd be that. Of course, if you have lettuce, lettuce would be good on here. You don't need no bacon. But if you have some bacon bits, you could use bacon bits on here in place of actual bacon and cooking. Now that is super light and super refreshing. But I really got an idea in my head and I wanted to try it. I don't know if this is gonna be good, but I wanted to try a little bit of this hot sauce. It's from Taco Casa, but you could use any hot sauce, Crystals, Frank's, store brand. Just wanna know if that little spice is gonna, you know, make it taste good. But that was actually surprisingly delicious. <laughs> you could probably sprinkle a little bit of Italian seasoning or parsley or basil on here. I think any one of those would be good. I don't know that I would particularly like that. I like those spices to be cooked before I eat them, but to each his own. For dinner on day one, I am going to be having some bread salad. I took two thinner sliced pieces of bread and then toasted it and chopped it into little bite-sized pieces. And for this, you'll need some tomato and a cucumber, part of a cucumber. I'm actually gonna be using this in five meals, so I'm just gonna kinda of divide it out now. One, a two, a three, a four, and five. All right, put it all away, but one of them. That's the thing about budget meals, when you're planning out for an entire week or a few days you, and you're really on a budget, you kinda gotta really partition things out and really like write them down and think about them and how much you're gonna need for each meal. Just kind of visualize it. Uh, yeah, this tomato is gonna be a miracle worker. Uh, it needs to last seven meals. Now, each of the meals isn't gonna need a lot, but uh, yeah, uh, I think it's gonna need to last seven. And I have one more whole one left. That's gonna be one entire meal that it will be used in. And then I have the other half from my lunch today. I'm gonna save that whole half for um, another meal. So I'm just going to try my best to partition this out. Really, in reality, I should have just bought one more tomato. But you know what, that's all right. I'm just gonna cut this into three pieces on each side and then I cut one out of the middle. I think I'm gonna use uh, this one for this meal. So with each of these, I'm just gonna chop them up into bite-sized pieces. I would usually, you know, chop them into bigger chunks, but I really need this to last the entire meal and I want each bite to be able to have a bite of everything if possible. I'm gonna be making a oil and vinegar sauce. So I'm using balsamic vinegar. You can use regular vinegar if you would like. Gonna use about a tablespoon. 
If you like it tangy, add a little more. About one teaspoon of oil. I'm going lighter on the oil today. Just a splash of garlic. A little bit of pepper. I just love salt and pepper in my oil sauce. If you have it, only if you have it, put a little Parmesan in there. It just clings very nicely to the oil in here and it just, it just gives it such a great flavor. Give her, give her a good old shaking. Just top your little crispy crunchy bread with your tomatoes and then your beautiful cucumbers. And last but certainly not least, you put your sauce on there. Don't put your sauce on until you're ready to eat though. Obviously, if you're not on a budget, you could add a lot more tomato to this. I think that would be really, really good in here to have more tomato. If you don't have fresh tomatoes, you can use canned tomatoes. That would be really good in here because they already have, you know, a lot of liquid to them. It's very refreshing with the cucumber. There's just something that says, ah, it's summer when you're eating cucumber. Breakfast day two. These are the overnight oats I made at the beginning of the video. I did have to add another one fourth cup of oats to this. So each of these containers will have a half a cup of oatmeal. It was just entirely too uh, liquidy for me. So <laughs> I just added more. I actually really like cold oatmeal. It's super refreshing. Obviously during the summer, during the winter, I wouldn't even uh, dream about it. <laughs> it goes with the season, I think. If you don't like cold oatmeal, you can put this in the microwave for 30, 40, 50 seconds until it's as warm as you want. That'll also help cook the apples a little bit and give you more of that apple pie flavor. But this is, uh, this is good just the way this is. I, I enjoy it cold. I'm actually really stoked about this next meal. I'm gonna make some chicken salad, but I'm gonna use some chickpeas. So chickpea chicken salad. I saw this online and it always sounds delicious and looks super delicious. So I was like, ah, I'm gonna try it out on my no cook week. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon to a tablespoon in here. I don't really know how it's gonna taste. So yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of, at a time of um, all the things. Give that a mix up, see what we got going on here. I did use one cup of my canned chickpeas and I mashed it up. I didn't want it to be super mashed, so I just used the fork. I wanted some larger pieces in it. For me, I love chicken salad. It is so delicious, so refreshing, and especially when it's hot outside. I like to put a little bit of mustard in my chicken salad. Put about a teaspoon of that. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of this dill relish. You could always use um, some chopped up pickles if you don't have relish. And gonna add in a little bit of the pepper. And then just a pinch of salt. And the littlest amount here of sugar. Those were all the basic ingredients that I saw online for chickpea salad. So I thought I'd give them all a taste in here. I'm gonna use half of one of my cucumber chunks. Then I have my one tomato that I sliced up a whole bunch. And I'm just gonna use one little slice for this. For the tomato, I am going to dice it into tiny pieces and make this stretch. Just a little bit of the tomato, I'm hoping it's gonna go a long way. I think the cucumbers, I'm just gonna slice very thinly. Put a few little pieces of cucumber on each of those. Put a little bit of chicken salad right there on top. You can toast the bread. I think that would be really good. Just bust out that toaster. I just think that would be super tasty. A nice crunch with the not so crunchy topping. <laughs> That's actually a super tasty alternative to chicken salad. I just, this is so good. I definitely recommend toasting the bread. I think that that's what this is missing, but the flavors are definitely there. The cool crispness of the cucumber and 
that chicken salad, chicken salad, is really good. I really hope you guys are getting some good ideas from these no-cook meal ideas. Some of these are really good. I don't know about the previous one with the bread. I think that it needs quite a few more ingredients to it to make it just like boom, delicious. I mean, it was all right, but I definitely think um, I should have put a little more thought into it. And I wish I would have. Apple slaw. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> yeah, so I found this idea online and thought it was a really cool idea. Never tried it, but I do love a good coleslaw, let me tell you. And I got plenty of coleslaw, so yeah, I could use really as much as I want to. <laughs> That's probably about a cup and a half, and I'm gonna be using a half of an apple. I am gonna chop it up, really, I guess kind of slice it up into thinly sliced pieces, just very tiny. I did see online that they shredded the apple with like a cheese shredder, but I kind of want the pieces to be a bit larger, just in comparison to the large pieces here. I really want to be able to taste, you know, whole pieces of the apple, so uh, I think I'll like it best this way. That's what I'm trying to say. I think I'll start with about half of the apple. And then basically you make it like you make your normal coleslaw. I'm gonna put a little bit of mayo in here, just a little bit of mustard, and some apple cider vinegar. I just love that tangy taste. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of sugar, just the littlest amount, a little pinch of salt. If you have it, add some garlic powder to this. That would be super delicious. So we got two slices of toast bread and our apple slaw. I did put this in the fridge for like 20 minutes or so. I really do like it super cold. I prefer it to stay in there for a few hours, but I'm ready to eat. That apple works surprisingly well with the mayo. I know, I know it might sound weird, but it actually tastes really good. It's like putting sugar in your coleslaw. Usually it does have a little bit of sugar in there and the apple has got a sweetness to it. so. I don't know, it's kind of like eating it with a little bit of sugar. I know some of these ideas might be a little bit off the wall, but I'm really trying to give you nice, fresh ideas, you know. Anybody can eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? No cook there. But I just want to give you guys a little bit of funness to it. Like, you might not like all these ideas, but you might like some of them. And you might like certain things about certain ideas that I present. And, you know, you can change those things if you want to. This is actually one of my favorite things that I've made so far. I actually think I like this better than the chickpea chicken salad. But I, I really like tangy things, if you guys haven't noticed yet. I just like that tang, a little tang to go with my twang. All right, breakfast day three is another one of the overnight oats. I have one more. And I did warm this up yesterday, like the last little bit. I put it in the microwave and warmed it up. I honestly think I like it best cold, but you should give it a shot both ways, you know, see which one you like best. All right, lunch on day three. It's coming a little early today because honestly breakfast did not hold me over as long as I was hoping it would, but this one has um, carbs in it, although the oatmeal had carbs in it too, plus it had the fruit from the apple, but anywho, I made some tomato sandwiches, but I wanted to try two different things on this. On one of the sandwiches, I put some of this tri-colored um, coleslaw that I got. And then on this other one, I wanted to try a little bit of that dill pickle. I know that, it, you know, tomatoes and pickles go good on a sandwich, so I wanted to give it a try with a little bit of the dill. So, just as a little experiment, I hope you all enjoy this. <laughs> I'm gonna have a bite with the one that's got the cabbage on it. Also, I did toast the bread this time. It's much better with it toasted. It was good, not, but I really like that crunch. And I could not taste the coleslaw on here, really. It, I think it just kind of adds to the crunch and to the bulk of the sandwich, but I really couldn't taste like cabbage. I mean, you could add it or not add it. There's really not very many um, calories in cabbage, so. Either way, but you still get a little bit of nutrients from that if you wanted to add it on there. It tastes good either way, with or without it. And then I want to try a little bit of this dill 
relish on here. That's actually super delicious on this. I definitely recommend if you have that or pickles to, you know, add that onto here. It's a cold thing. It goes perfect with a sandwich. Dinner for day three is some chickpea salad and I put a little tomato on there and then I thought, you know what, it'd be fun also to put a little bit of that shredded cabbage on there. So I'm gonna give that a try with it on here. Also, I toasted the bread again. I just, I think it tastes best with it toasted because the inside is so soft that, I don't know, it just, it needs some crunch to it. And this stuff is really good. I, I'm actually really surprised at how delicious the chickpea chicken salad is. It's super tasty. I, I definitely recommend giving it a try. All right, day four is a, another overnight oats. I did decide to go ahead and put this in the microwave and I cooked it for like a minute and a half and then I put it back in the refrigerator to get it cold. Something about cooking the oats. I don't know, I just like it, but I like them cold, but I want them to be cooked, if you know what I mean. So that and I really should have made these like fresh the night before, but for video purposes, that's why I kind of did it all at once. But I do recommend not making these like days ahead of time. That's just me. I don't feel like the taste is fresh. So heating it up in the microwave and then putting it back in the refrigerator actually kind of helped with the texture and also the taste of this to make it seem like it was a little bit fresher. So I do recommend making these fresh. Also, I wanted to say that I honestly kind of miss cooking. <laughs> I, uh, I'm enjoying not cooking, if this is making sense, but I miss it at the same time. I, I like hot foods, but this is really nice and refreshing because it is really hot outside. I'm enjoying it for what it is, but I want to let you know that I miss cooking. <laughs> but I hope you find these ideas helpful and yeah, see you at lunch. So I'm going to be making some stuffed tomatoes and I'm going to be using my chickpea salad. Just carving out the insides and I was sitting here wondering, you know, I could probably use these insides for something and I am going to because waste not want not. I'm actually going to just add that to my chickpea salad because I think tomatoes, I put it on top of the other dishes, will go good inside of here. I think also if you wanted to use an apple and carve out the centers and stuff the inside of the apple, I think that would be super delicious. And I'm just going to serve it with two pieces of toast. All right, I'm just going to pick it up and eat it guys. It is just absolutely fabulous. It is wonderful. Take a bite of the bread immediately after taking a bite of the tomato. Oh, it's so delicious. This is probably one of my favorite things I've made this challenge. I'm also thinking about making some coleslaw, just regular coleslaw with the coleslaw mix I have and just adding some mayo and the normal things you would add to it since I have it. I think I actually might do that in addition to this on the side. So din din on this fine and fabulous fourth day of no cooking. I'm gonna be making a banana peanut butter smoothie. I did freeze two bananas because that is, to me, the best way to make a smoothie. Although I'll only be using the one banana in this shake. I'm gonna add probably about a cup or so of milk. And then I got the crunchy peanut butter because that's what I love. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon or two in here. I'll probably put about a tablespoon to start with, blend it up, see if I feel like it needs any more than that, and then I'll keep adding it. This is really nice too because you get lots of protein from the milk and from the peanut butter. You know what? You know what I'm gonna add? I'm gonna add some of this oatmeal because there's plenty. I'm gonna add in about one fourth cup. It's really good in here. And if you mix it up now and then put it in the fridge or the freezer for like 20, 30 minutes, it'll help soften up oatmeal. But I often just kind of put it in my shakes and eat it raw, so. All right, here we go. I just love adding the oatmeal to this. It just gives it this like kind of nutty flavor. And it really does add to like, you know, the bulk of it, gives you a little bit of carbs also in here so it does add like a, a slight gritty texture but if you do put this in the fridge or the freezer for like 20-30 minutes now that it's mixed and then enjoy it it uh it'll 
help take away some of that grittiness. But it just kind of lends this really nice overall flavor to the milk and the peanut butter. It just works really well. I'm not sure if anything gets any easier than cottage cheese and bananas. I, it's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite combinations. I'm gonna only use a half a banana for this and then the other half will be for one more meal. I like to cut my bananas for my cottage cheese and bananas into pretty small pieces. That way there's a, like a bite of banana in every single bite. I like my cottage cheese on the drier side, so I do get the full fat version of it. I feel that that is the driest you can get. The less fat they have, the more liquid that's in them. It, that's what I have found. There are actually four servings in this and a serving is a half a cup, but I'm going to be making this only into three meals. So I'll be using one third of the container, more protein, more calories, and yeah, a little bit more filling. All right, and then just add the bananas in there. And that is a meal, folks. I just love it. It's so simple and you get potassium. Something about the sweet bananas with that rich, creamy taste of cottage cheese, they just balance each other so well. It's one of my favorite things to like snack on if I'm hungry at night before bed or even during the day when I don't wanna, you know, eat bad things. <laughs> I am gonna redo the bread salad that I made. I'm still gonna call it that, but I don't really know what it's called stuff on a piece of French toast. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I am toasting my French bread right now. I have one block of the cucumber and one slice of the tomato. I just cut those up, just tiny, tiny little bite-sized pieces. Putting in a little bit of pepper. I think some jalapenos would be good in this. So if you have that, I do recommend putting that in here. And I'm going to put a little bit of mayonnaise. I'll probably add a bit more in a minute. And then I really want to use all this coleslaw, so I'm going to try to incorporate it into a lot of things. <laughs> I hadn't originally planned on doing that. I was just going to use some of it, but I, I don't want it to go bad. So I took some of that and I chopped it up into little pieces. I'm going to toss that in here. I actually think that's enough mayonnaise that I put in there. It was like a, a little over a teaspoon. I'm going to put a little bit more pepper, no more salt. If you have hot sauce, I think a little splash or two of hot sauce in here. If you like spice, that slight little vinegar tang to it. I'm not going to put any in it this time. No oil and no vinegar. All right, we got the bread toasted. It is a lot less crunchy than the last time. The other one was way too crunchy. This is way better. I think that's kind of the reason why it was ruined last time. And I want to put this on top of the toast, but I'm thinking I need some way to get it to stick. So I think putting a small little layer of mayonnaise on the top is gonna get me there, I, I hope anyway. That's why I didn't want to over mayonnaise that. I probably could have put a little bit more in there, but I think it'll work out best this way. All right, so. Let's put some of our toppings on here. Yeah, it spills over. I just eat it. Okay, let me give this one go. It's already way better than the previous one, but I do want to try it with a little bit of hot sauce. It's missing this like kick and I have the pepper in there, but it didn't quite give it the kick. That is fantastic. Okay, this is definitely a go, and I would make this the first time around. And uh, redo! <laughs> but that's what it's about for me on these budget meals. Sometimes I have an idea in my head, I, I play it out, and it just doesn't go the way I was hoping it was going to go. And then that's why I kind of give my analysis, like, oh, I would add this or that or change that. And then the next time I try it, I could do it that way and, you know, build it from there and build up the budget. Build up the budget meals. Supper day five is another round of chickpea chicken salad and I used some more of the coleslaw mix. All right, breakfast day six. I have the rest of my banana and this is the rest of that granola bar that I used the first time I made this. Basically it's equivalent to about one bar 
one crunchy bar. So I'm just gonna add that in here. Adding in my sliced up banana. Of course, adding in milk. And I thought that um, it might be interesting to try and add some peanut butter to this. I've actually never done that, so I'm gonna give it a go. I'm just gonna take like little dollops and add it in there. Hopefully it kind of sticks to the uh, granola or the banana or something. I know if you put the peanut butter inside the milk, it's gonna kind of get cold and seize up, so it might keep its shape in order for me to be able to eat, you know, large pieces of the peanut butter. Looks like the uh, peanut butter actually is holding together pretty well. Let's see if we can get a bite of all of the things on this spoon. That's really nice with the peanut butter. Just kind of gives it a more nutty flavor. You could also take the milk and the peanut butter and blend it up and then put it in here and add your other stuff. Your bananas and your granola cereal. Lunch today for day six is going to be some hummus and I'm gonna make some tomato and hummus sandwiches using the last little bit of bread that I have left. I'm just using the other portion of the can of chickpeas that I had. To that I'm gonna add probably about one teaspoon or so of olive oil, some ground paprika, and some ground red pepper. You'll need an immersion blender and Basically, you're just gonna wanna blend this up until it's super smooth. All right, so I did end up adding a little bit of salt, pepper, and some garlic salt to this. A little bit more paprika and a little bit more of that red pepper seasoning. And it tastes good like that. If you have some sesame seeds, I would recommend putting that on top or in here. You could also add a little bit more olive oil if you want to. I spread some of this dip on my toasted bread and I'm just gonna add on my tomatoes. A little bit of the cabbage, just for a little extra crunch, a little additional flavor. I think this would also be good with some more of that cucumber, but I need to save that for another meal or two. All right, and there is my little sandwiches. Go ahead and give her tasty. It's not bad. I think it needs a little bit more garlic powder and maybe a little splash of pepper on top. And I definitely think it could use a little bit more spice. So maybe a splash of like hot sauce, crystals, franks, that sort of thing. But I mean, it's not bad. It's got a nice crunch to it and the flavor of the chickpeas is really nice and blended and soft and like hummus, it's really good. For dinner, day six, I'm going to be making a hummus wrap with some cucumbers and some more of that coleslaw mix. Just gonna use about half of this mixture. All right, put some of that cabbage on there. And then about half of my cucumbers. So hopefully give it a nice fresh flavor. Cut it in half. My favorite part is the center. I feel like that's where everything kind of congregates and comes together. All right, let's give it a try. That's okay. I think that um, it could definitely use some tomatoes in here and some jalapenos and some hot sauce. I don't know, something about the hot sauce with the um, chickpea hummus just, I don't know. It just gives it such a nice flavor. I think I liked the um, hummus sandwich that I made before more than this, but I do like the cucumbers in here with the hummus. My second favorite cottage cheese and fruit combination is apples and cottage cheese. So that is what I'm making for breakfast today. I'm only gonna use half of the apple and then I'll use the other half for eating cottage cheese and apple one more time. And I'll be using half of what's left. So that's another one third of the cottage cheese carton. I like the apple version of this because it's got a nice crunch against the uh, really, you know, soft and creamy cottage cheese. The banana is good in there because it just gives it this, like really good sweetness, but it's all kind of the same texture. So this is really nice. It just breaks up that monotony in the texture. Still delicious, refreshing, cool, crisp, crunchy. Soft, creamy, 
I love it. I am going to be making a peanut butter granola pinwheel. So I'm going to warm up my tortilla in the microwave for like 10, 15 seconds. I just want to warm it up just a little bit. This way, I was hoping it would, you know, help the peanut butter spread just a little bit better on my tortilla. Right, so I think that is a good amount on there. I have my granola bars. There's two of them in here, and I've crushed them up with that rolling pin. And these are just um, oat and honey granola. I'm just going to toss that on there like a so. Give it an old rollaroni up e. My cat is over there meowing at me. Can you guys believe that? She acts like she can get no love. That's all she ever gets is love. I think I'll put just a little bit of uh, peanut butter to uh, glue it in place here on the end. All right. I hope this works out and uh, it doesn't become a big old mess. I think these ends I probably just are gonna have to eat because they're kind of all wonky. All right, I'm gonna try to make them a little bit on the thicker side. I mean, you could just eat it like this if you want to. I'm just kind of going for presentation here. <laughs> I just thought it would be fun. All right, and there we go. These ones didn't stay together very well, but you know what? It's all right. I think this would be good with a little bit um, more peanut butter on top, just like drizzled over the top, or making the peanut butter layer inside just a bit thicker, I think. But I will give one of these little cuties a try. That's really tasty. I was concerned about the tortilla. I wasn't sure how the peanut butter was going to go with the tortilla. I was thinking that this probably would be better toasted, but... That's what I was thinking before I actually took a bite. But this actually works very well, and I can't even taste the, the the tortilla on the outside. I mean, the most prominent flavor is the peanut butter and the oat flavor from the crunchy granola inside. This is quite good. I think that this would be really good with a glass of milk. Also, I think putting a thin layer of cream cheese inside and then put the peanut butter on top and then put the crunchy granola honestly they think that would just make this even better than it already is. All right, and dinner today is going to be the last bit of the hummus and cucumber uh, wrap. So, and then I, I also used a little bit more of the cabbage and I still have actually a lot of cabbage left. So this is dinner for today. Breakfast today is the second half of that apple and then the rest of the cottage cheese. All right, lunch again today is a peanut butter granola pinwheel. And I might make another one, but just using peanut butter and a flour tortilla because I still have that stuff left. And dinner is the last frozen banana peanut butter and milk, and I made another smoothie. Quite possibly the best simple no cook meal you can make. <laughs> it's super delicious. Lots of protein, lots of potassium, lots of coldness, and lots of deliciousness. All right, all that's left is some cabbage. Oh, and I have a few tortillas left. And I finished up the milk when I was having those little pinwheels because they were a bit dry because of the peanut butter. So I did finish that up. Oh, and there's also peanut butter. So cabbage, peanut butter, and some flour tortillas. So that is it. Um, I'll find something to use this up with. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you liked this video, please go check out some of my other videos. Thank you so much for watching and happy eating my friends.